this is a March BMW M1. It's a, it's a Group 5, it's designed for Group 5 uh, by March Engineering in order of uh, BMW. So it was uh, uh, BMW wanted to compete in, in Group 5 racing with their M1 uh, and then they needed a turbo engine and a good chassis. Uh, and they looked at the Porsche Moby Dick and they saw that the Porsche Moby Dick has an aluminum tube frame and uh, almost no chassis left from a normal 911 uh, road car. So they thought we should also do something like this. Uh, and they contacted March, which they already had good contact with because they uh, supplied the BMW uh, engines for the Formula 2 championships. Uh, uh, and asked them if they want to build a monocoque, monocoque chassis uh, for their uh, Group 5 project. They, the turbo uh, M1 engine uh, was uh, development was started, uh, but it was never completed by BMW. So when the, the first drawings uh, from this car uh, were started in 1978 by uh, John Gentry, the turbo engine was still in development, and when the car was completed, the turbo engine never came to realization. So the, they were stuck with the BMW engine and uh, uh, the car was never competitive against the Porsche's uh, turbo, uh, turbocharged engines. In the end, uh, the order uh, from BMW was six chassis. Uh, there were uh, four, uh, no, five completed. Uh, there were uh, one show car which is in the BMW museum. It actually has a turbo on the BMW engine, but it, it has never completed one lap. Uh, then there is uh, the works car from 1979, uh, which did, uh, which tried to qualify for the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1979. They had to build 500 road examples of the M1 uh, to get it homologated in Group 5. Uh, that didn't, that wasn't uh, completed in 1979, so they had to enter Group 6. And Group 6 is for prototypes like the Porsche 936, uh, all the very fast prototype Le Mans cars. So they qualified in that class. Uh, and then the, the ACO, uh, uh, they allowed 51 cars to enter the qualification, and, but there were only 50 places on the grid. Um, so they had to uh, remove one car from the qualification results. And they, they decided that it, was the, the, the slow, it has to be the slowest car from the fastest category. And that was this car, because it was, it was, not, allowed, it was not meant for a Group 6, so it was so slow. It, it also had the normal pro car engine and not the turbocharged engine where it was uh, where it was uh, designed for. So that was the the works car uh, that that later on it crashed in 1979 and it was uh, rebuilt uh, with uh, with uh, the other mo another monocoque. Uh, that was uh, the 1980 car for, from March. And then there was this car which is built for uh, Peter Gregg and uh, and uh, Jim Busby in uh, in the United States. They wanted to compete in the IMSA championship where the Porsche 935 uh, turbo was also very dominant. Uh, usually the first 10 places were Porsches, so uh, they had to come with, with something that was uh, just as fast. So they thought a uh, turbocharged BMW. Jim Busby drove a 320i uh, turbo uh, uh, Group 5 car before and he, he thought like the BMW M1 turbo that would be very very nice. <laughs> but uh, in the end the turbo engine never arrived. So when, uh, in 1980 they, uh, they did uh, the 24 hours of Daytona and uh, the 12 hours of Sebring with the pro car engine. In both races they had technical difficulties and they didn't finish. He, he knew that the turbo engine wasn't coming, so he, uh, he took out the BMW engine and put a Chevrolet V8 uh, fuel injection, 5 liter, uh, in it. Um, it was uh, very powerful, uh, but it also it was the conversion was done in two weeks, and there was a lot of problems. So the the next two or three races, they also had technical difficulties and they wouldn't finish. Then the engine blew up in the last race. And uh, Mr. Busby uh, probably spent enough money on the on the car, and uh, he, he bought a Porsche 935 and raced that car. <laughs> so this car was uh, totally uh, successless. <laughs> yeah, successless. <laughs> um, then uh, uh, the car was uh, was uh, was for sale uh, for uh, one year, um, and uh, Bob Gregg uh, from USA uh, bought the car. Uh, he raced uh, the car again with uh, with a BMW engine, so the BMW engine, Pro car engine, was put back in. Uh, he did two races in 1982 uh, in the IMSA GTP category, so that's actually the, the prototype uh, GTP category. Uh, in 1982 the cars were much more developed and uh, there were real prototype uh, cars and this car was actually a, a modified Group 5 car, so that was not really <laughs> not the same class. So it was not uh, fast or uh, reliable, 
nothing. <laughs> uh, then in uh, uh, then in 1983 or in the in the winter of 1982, 1983, uh, he built another Chevrolet engine because the the Broker engine wasn't powerful enough. Still 500 horsepower, it was not enough. And he built a state-of-the-art uh, Chevrolet uh, a small block uh, with aluminium uh, cylinder heads, uh, dry sump, uh, all the tricks. Uh, and it had uh, it was six liters and. Uh, they, they say it's 700 horsepower and that engine is still in this car. So today, hopefully, we will drive this engine. Uh, Bob Gregg uh, kept the, after the Miami Grand Prix of 1983. Uh, that was also a very successful race because uh, <laughs> uh, the, it was a street circuit and it was the first edition. Uh, and uh, it was raining the, the whole day. Uh, the, the streets were flooded and the, the race was cancelled after, uh, cancelled after 50, 50 kilometers or something. So it actually didn't do much uh, racing. <laughs> uh, then he put the car in his garage and uh, he kept it for 28 years and nobody heard about it. Finally, uh, a couple of years ago, the car popped up on the internet and uh, that uh, we, knew, we already knew what these cars were and uh, we already had much research in it and uh, we, we, uh, we knew what we had. <laughs> Uh, today is the, actually uh, the, the first race in, in 30 years that such a car will enter a race. Uh, hopefully, it will, uh, if, if we can finish, it will be the, possibly the, the second time this, such a car will finish a race. So, uh, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed. <laughs>
überreicht, wie gesagt, Gerd Bögel von PVM Leichtmetallräder an Marc Luay aus Frankreich. Unseren Zweitplatzierten an Jan Bott aus Holland und dann an Daniel Schrei. Den Gewinner der Youngtimer Touring Car Challenge aus Deutschland. So, ich komme mal hinten rum vorbeigelaufen. Ich klappe ja auch. Jetzt wird es nämlich feucht hier oben. Ja, ich glaube, dass der Daniel ganz gut, das dachte ich mir schon, das habe ich befürchtet. Ja. <lacht> so, ich rede mal hier aus dem Hintergrund weiter. Liebe Besucher, Sie wissen, wir haben ein ganz großes Ereignis heute Abend noch vor uns. Den Weltrekordversuch hier auf dem Hockenheimring zur Bosch Hockenheim Historic. Ich lade Sie herzlich ein, dass Sie auch...